evening, Dartmouth sports fans. Welcome into another edition of Big Green Classic. I'm Brett Franklin. Glad to have you with us. And this evening's broadcast will feature a matchup from 2016 for Dartmouth women's volleyball as the Big Green host Brown from November 15th, 2016. Brett Franklin with you. Glad to have you aboard. And let's uh, welcome our panel for this evening. Happy to have back with us. He is the head coach of Dartmouth Women's Volleyball. It's Gila Doran. How are you, coach? I'm great. Thank you for having us. I, I'm excited to be here with Zoe, Molly, and Emily and relive some old memories. Coach, glad to be here. Glad you could be here with us. Also joining us, uh, the newest addition to the coaching staff, assistant coach, former player, class of 2019, a captain, Zoe Leonard, joining us. Coach, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Also joining us to round out this fantastic panel from the class of 2017. She was a captain her senior year, Emily Astorita. How are you, Emily? Hi, doing well. Thanks. Happy to be here. And also joining us from the class of 2017, we say hi to Mo uh, Molly Cornfine. How are you, Molly? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, really happy to be here and uh, great, great to see everybody. Can't wait to go down memory lane as we uh, begin this matchup here. It's the second go around between uh, Dartmouth and Brown from 2016. This was the final home weekend set uh, for the Big Green that season, hosting Brown, what we're watching here tonight, of uh, that Brown-Yale matchup, or that Brown-Yale weekend, I should say. The Big Green looking to exact revenge uh, against the Bears after uh, dropping the first contest in Providence. So these two teams going at it here to close out senior weekend. And as we uh, look back to the 2016 season, uh, Coach Dorn, when you think back to that season and – We'll talk more about this game as it goes along. Uh, what are some of the memories, some of the things that uh, come to your mind when you think about the 2016 squad? Well, it was my first season here. So, uh, but, I, you know, the, the, the thing I remember is we had a great start. Then, you know, we had a great senior class that came in really poised after a pretty good season the year before. And after we were like 5-0, and 4-0, Stacy went down and, you know, uh, our starting setter. And we had to change a lot of what we were doing early. And, um, you know, it was an up and, I say up and down season. We, there was a lot of disappointment through the season, but I thought the team has stuck together like no other and really bonded through some of the tougher times and and when you go to this last weekend and you got to give everything you've got you will see even in this game we had to dig very very deep and come back at the end with, with a big win but it's it wasn't easy for us that year for so many reasons but the credit to again to the team the, the chemistry the senior leadership that we had is what i remember the most Emily, you were a uh, captain uh, on this squad uh, in your uh, uh, senior season. Uh, what are some of the memories that you were that you have from this season going into this year and being on that leadership role? Yeah. Um, so I remember going into senior season, we had just gotten a full new coaching staff, which is which is always a big change. Um, and so we were learning new systems and stuff with the team, but uh, we always had a really close, tight-knit team. Um, and so we we worked together, we worked with the coaching staff, and we were able to um, sort of stay positive and keep, keep pushing throughout the whole season, even with the injuries and the setbacks we had. Um, and I think everyone on the team really kept um, like an open mind and were, were able to learn these new things and um, try out new positions and just sort of do whatever it was that the team needed at that moment. Molly, you were a senior on that squad. What are the things that you remember from that 2016 season? Uh, I mean, Gilad and Emily both mentioned the team chemistry we had. It was, you know, these are my best friends that I was playing with and, um, you know, going through a lot of change and a set of change and position changes. I forget even watching this, Emily and I used to just swap back and <laughs> back and forth on either pin it was so fun um but you know going through all that change but having all that trust in each other um really allowed us to like, keep our heads up all season and um just keep going for it and i remember this last weekend you know we were just um you know going as hard as we could um because it was our our final hurrah and we had a blast doing it and uh it's 
it's great to kind of rewatch this, but um, yeah, that was definitely kind of our, our mindset going into senior season was, you know, putting that trust in each other and, and going through all that together. And, you know, it wasn't the most successful season, but you know, it's the fondest of memories for me and uh, you know, for my life thus far. So. Zoe, you were a uh, sophomore on this squad. Uh, can you speak to the, the senior leadership that uh, Molly and Emily and the rest of the uh, squad was able to bring that year from your perspective as an underclassman? Yeah, it was uh, pretty interesting, um, I guess, like makeup of the team. They had such a large class, such a large senior class. And we also had um, Kyra, a fifth year senior. Um, and so, you know, we had a lot of senior leadership. And I think coming off of a strong season, but also going through a coaching change, it was uh, really pivotal to have like a senior class that um, cared about the underclassmen and cared about the team cohesion as a whole. Because I think it would have been an opportunity for maybe team chemistry to fall apart with the tr transition like that. And I think this senior class did such a good job of bringing us together off the court and on the court. Um, but I think especially off the court, you know, it was just a warm, welcoming environment. And we had so much fun. And that was all in part to the senior class in the 17s. And um, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. And then also just playing volleyball, you know, loving to play the game, um, especially Molly and Emily. That's one of the things I always admired about them is that they just love to have fun and you know even in the tough games always smiling and just a really good attitude so i'm definitely thankful for this class um yeah coach uh, you mentioned it was your first season uh here in hanover and uh you know when you look back to to year one uh in just kind of that those first couple weeks you know and the players kind of talked about it you know trying to instill your system trying to you know get used to everybody and and you know in a new setting um you know when you think back to that first year um how much have you grown since year one to now as a head coach it, it, it certainly has to be uh quite a, a large growth there since uh, since year one Yes, uh, I have to give the, the credit, like Zoe said, to this first class because they could have come and said, oh, a new coach, our last year, let's just, you know, uh, we don't care mentality or how do we pass 10 weeks and moving on. And it was exactly the opposite. They carried the team through that short springs that they had through the summer and welcoming me personally. I remember when I was first hired, many of them made it as a point to introduce themselves to me, to make sure I know what it means to be here, how, what's that with way. But they had a, tons of pride of how they carry themselves uh, on and off the court, but also as part of the team. Uh, and we started the season really well. You know, I think we went to Sacred Heart. We, we went up and beat the Milwaukee teams are a pretty good team. And we beat Sacred Heart at Sacred Heart. All the games were like two points. Uh, and, you know, we had to kind of figure the lineup that in a very, very short time because we haven't seen the team before. And like I said, then when Stacy went down, it didn't really just affect her leadership and her toughness, but it's also forced us to do things differently. We had to use Zoe as a setter. Um, Kyra, who had a blind connection with you know, with uh, Stacy all of a sudden running off the slide had to adjust. So we had to adjust for that. So you're losing an all Ivy returner, fifth year. Uh, she was one of the team captains, a really good leader for the team that had to find a different way to contribute. You're looking at Emily, who after the first two weekends led the nation in points. I don't know if she remembered that, but all of a sudden said she played for three years going down and now we have to adjust you know and so a lot of things kind of change when we had we kind of thought we will have a much better situation all of a sudden things kind of change drastically so we had to become a setter in week two and a half basically and uh and that's kind of changed everything else and i really have to give the the, the seniors who I remember we had some really, really tough games. It's almost like every game went five that year. That's all I remember. Like, like no matter what we do, we say, ah, well, if we will uh, be patient at the end, we will be okay. But every time we went to Penn, I think it was 140-some digs, and then still went to five, you know. And then Penn at home went to five. Brown, five. Yale, five. And so we had that um, competitiveness, but we weren't like – we had some holes that was really hard for us to – 
to figure it out. And I'm glad that the last week we kind of find it at the end. But um, like I said, it was one of the most fun years for me to start to coach here because of how the players uh, embraced us and how much we grew as coaching staff with them throughout this, uh, you know, sometimes tough losses. Um, but, you know, we have some, gr I, I, I have nothing but great memories from that year. And, uh, you know, to see Emily and Molly here and being in touch with so many of that 17 class, it's still, you know, a testament to, to the battles we had to go together, even in a short period of time. Molly, uh, you know, again, as one of the seniors on that squad, was there a sense amongst the seniors, amongst the upperclassmen on that roster, you know, with the new coach, like, hey, we need to do a little bit more here to, you know, to set the tone and to make sure everybody's on the same page? Was there kind of that sense at the beginning of the season amongst the seniors? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we were all very close, you know, coming into that season and um, had come off a pretty successful season or our most successful one we'd had um, thus far. So it was, you know, kind of good motivation to get us ready that summer. Um, but I, Emily and I were both part of the, um, you know, kind of the interviewing process when Gilad came in. Um, so that was really interesting. We kind of got a little bit of a preview of, um, you know, the skill and, um, you know, sheer experience Gilad was bringing in. So we got to prepare a little bit that way, um, you know, and kind of you know, let our underclassmen know like, hey, this is the real deal. And, um, you know, we can we can all do this together. Um, but it, yeah, I think that could cohesion really really did spur from us kind of I don't know we didn't have a sit down conversation about it or anything like that but it was definitely um something that was known across us as seniors and we really did want to make sure you know the incoming freshmen uh you know sophomores and juniors um were all on the same page with us and were ready to go uh, I mean it was I don't know it was just so much it was so much fun and it was a lot of change and a lot of new but um you know to have that kind of solid foundation uh in the eight of us then was was um awesome I think for for everybody same question Emily I mean was was there a sense of, you know especially you being a captain for this year was there you know kind of a, a you know again a sense amongst you and your captains and, and the seniors to you know to take on a little bit more this year knowing that there be a new coaching staff and things will be a little bit different than the season before yeah definitely um I totally echo with what Molly said um I think that even starting in the spring like once we had picked new new, uh, sorry, once Aaron was gone and we were sort of going through the process of getting new coach and then G came, um, we, we all sort of realized that we needed to step up a little bit more. And so I think there were, yeah, there were a few of us who were involved in the, in that process and, um, had a little bit of insight into it, but overall, like we sort of came together as a team and we were like, like, no matter who we have as a coach, we have to like, we just have to make sure that the like culture of the team keeps on keeping on and like that we're able to stick together through this whole thing um and then I think in terms of like uh just like scheduling and also like team rules and stuff like that we just had to like make sure that we were able to keep ourselves accountable um even when there weren't people there who were supposed to, who were like or originally keeping us accountable Zoe, going back to that start that Coach uh, Gila talked about, you know, that Sacred Heart uh, Invitational, you guys came out uh, beating Milwaukee uh, in 3-0, uh, George Mason 3-0, uh, you know, Sacred Heart 3-0. Um, of course, Emily was uh, named the MVP of that tournament, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Uh, but uh, it was a good start to that year, and that had to build some momentum amongst the team uh, early on in non-conference play. Yeah, I think um... – I remember that, yeah, we felt really good coming off of that tournament just because, like, we went through a spring season where we didn't have a single coach on staff. We went to UNH to play our spring scrimmage. Yeah, I don't know if Molly and Emily remember that. I assume so because they're laughing. But we went to our UNH, like, spring scrimmage without a single coach. Our strength trainer took us, and she was the only adult, quote-unquote, that was with us, and Paige Caridi. Um, was so kind enough to come and like write the lineups for us and and that was it and so um to to come from that where we like didn't know if we were having a coach and it took a while to get um the hire all the way through but coming from that into a preseason where we just you know showed up and kind of balled out 
um, I remember feeling super excited and um, as a team just feeling like we had good momentum and you know it's definitely a lot happened that season I actually didn't suit up for the Sacred Heart tournament um, I'm happy I even got to go but I didn't play a single point because I was um, fairly injured and quite honestly didn't know if I was playing that season at all or not because of the the hip situation so um, a lot changed coming into the second preseason tournament and and, and there on out after but um, yeah it was a lot of fun and kind of felt like we had a little pep in our step to start the year. Emily you have a lot of uh, awards and uh, accolades during your uh, your Dartmouth uh, career but uh, again you were MVP of that tournament to, to start out the season uh, do you remember just what was working well for you in those fir first few games? I mean, what, uh, what, what got you to MVP status during that Sacred Heart tournament? Um, it's a really good question. I actually, it might be weird, but I actually don't remember that I was MVP for that. Uh, most of the things that I remember are like big team wins that we had and like big team games that we had against like big opponents or something. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I feel like at the beginning of the year, there was there was a strong like, connection between the team just because there were so many seniors and we all had been there so long together um and we like just yeah there were so many of us that we could like sort of make a team like put a put a team on the floor by ourselves um but then we also had a really strong underclass who like came in and brought the energy and it just like really like livened us up and like made us remember how much we like love the game and love Dartmouth and we're just excited to be there so I think it was just um, it was a good combination. And then also we had, we probably had some new like tactics from G and A all that we were learning and I'm not sure, but I guess it I, remember, together. <laughs> I kind of, I mean, I think it was the first time I'd ever seen you play outside too. Cause the season before you were played pretty much right side exclusively. And I remember Gilad came in and was able to like with you, Molly and Danielle, just kind of, you know, triangle it and put you guys wherever we needed you to be. And that was, really nice as a setter especially just to have people that can get kills from anywhere and i think that probably allowed us to utilize you even more like you were hitting <laughs> right side you're hitting outside you're hitting back row you know like you were just getting kills and like lapping them up and that's probably how you got mvp that tournament. <laughs> actually we did hit a lot more back row i think that season yeah that yeah was probably also part of it yeah yeah well, the, you know, the, the secret to it was we had a lot of players, but nobody was 100%. So we had to figure <laughs> how, you know, Molly had her things, Zoe had her things. And, you know, you know, we had Sierra came back from, you know, I think surgery, you know, and it was like, okay, who is healthy? But also we have a lot of outsides that we can, if we don't do it in a traditional way, and put the middles opposite the setter, especially after Stacy went down. So Zoe connect better with Kyra, maybe Corinne, maybe better with Abby. Then we we don't have to mix the middles as much with such a short time to prepare. But we'll have always more attackers, uh, you know, uh, in the front or in the back. Um, and Emily, who was healthy, you know, could have play it until tomorrow if we have to. So we just say, hey, you know, she can be all the way around. That's kind of was when we didn't know the team and we were doing preseason, we had to figure things out and see everybody kind of grow into it. And we knew Molly can hit on the left side. So, and Emily will be a great blocker on the right side. So if they're near each other, we can always kind of change it uh, based on the opponent and try to put our best against their best and, and figure it out that way. So that's what it came about. So we'll, uh, we'll hold off on our next questionnaires as we're going to be uh, coming uh, down to the uh, first set here. Of course, again, this uh, matchup from 2016 as the uh, Big Green and the Brown Bears going at it uh, in the final weekend of this uh, home stretch. And uh, again, we'll just kind of let this play out here as the uh, final points uh, coming back when what would be a very, well, what will be, not to be a spoiler alert, uh, a very impressive comeback from the Big Green uh, in this mm -hmm. contest. So um, certainly looking forward to that as uh, we'll, uh, we'll wait for match point here um, and continuing along here on Big Green Classics. Yeah. Feel free to chime in too if you see anything here. Yeah, nice just pass. it's nice, nice the last like yeah, I think the last point Maddie sets to Abby, the freshman connection, but Brown got the better of us here. 
It is a long game, and we're going to find out more as we continue here. We'll take a quick break. More of Dartmouth Big Green Classic coming up next. Make your debit card green. Big Green. Select from 16 options by visiting any Ledyard Bank location or calling 888-746-4562. Ledyard's online and mobile banking includes free personal mobile check deposit so you can show all your Dartmouth pride on your home turf. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. All right, welcome back, Big Green fans. Getting ready for the second set of Dartmouth and Brown women's volleyball from 2016. As we welcome you back, Brett Franklin here, along with the head coach of Dartmouth women's volleyball, Gilad Doran, Zoe Leonard, current assistant coach and former player also joining us, along with uh, the class of 2017, Emily Astorita, and also Molly Cornfine from class of 2017, as Brown is up one game to none here as we begin the uh, second set. And, uh, Coach, uh, we were mentioning, uh, you know, going into this matchup here with Brown, uh, the first meeting between these two teams in Providence, uh, the Bears came away with a uh, three games to one uh, victory. Um, remember much about that first meeting between these two programs and how much you were able to take away from that first meeting into this weekend here? No, I don't remember much. I remember the disappointment half after the game when we lost there because it was, you know, so a little bit of a history. The team had a chance to... Uh, win or be tied for Ivy Championship the year before. We talked about seven seniors coming back. Um, so they have a lot of experience of uh, having success the year before and all of a sudden we are finding ourselves with, you know, four different lineups in three weeks and try to kind of catch up and we we lost the first uh, home game against Harvard in a really tough one. Uh, then we went five at Penn when we try to break the 20 some years or forever that we never win there, you know, and we lost in five. And then we had a game uh, at Brown, you know, and uh, I, um, I thought we played pretty well, but it's a really hard gym to play. It's kind of always long and and ever, we talked about it in the last uh, recording how in the Ivy everybody can beat everybody. So on any given night you have a chance to 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 do something special. Um, you know we know we're a little bit more physical than they are, but you know we had to do. We had to put some balls down. They're a very scrappy team. Even in this game, they have over 100 digs, and they were just not just gonna give it away. And uh, we lost the first game. They made a run there, the late uh, third part of the first set. And now we're in game two, and just try to just gain some grounds, build some momentum. We're playing at home. It's senior weekends, and um, you know you have a lot of emotions. You know you have uh, seven seniors on the team. They want to win, but, you know, you have to put things aside and just get things things done. And uh, so, you know, we were going to game two thinking, OK, let's forget about game one when Brown beat us pretty handedly. And let's see if we can get this tied 1-1 here. And uh, so that's all our focus was. We knew who were their main hitters. We knew who their people who can hurt us. But, um, you know, and we started in 5-2 in this game, which is pretty good start for now. Uh, Molly, uh, that was uh, coach kind of leaned into uh, my uh, my next question and just kind of, you know, this is the final weekend, senior weekend, uh, you know, and uh, you and Emily were, were a part of that. I mean, can you walk through us who don't have, you know, who don't have senior weekends, what that is like? And as coach mentioned, I'm sure emotions are running high, but you also have to go out there and do a job. Yeah, um, it was super special for us. I think almost everybody or everybody's families were out um, and all of our families have gotten to know each other over the years. So um, there was just a lot of energy and um, celebration going on. It was really great. But, um, you know, Gilad had mentioned earlier that I was dealing with some, some back injury stuff. And, um, you know, I kind of used this weekend personally to mentally go in and think like, this is the last time I'm going to be doing, you know, this, I'm going to be playing competitive volleyball. Um, so, you know, 
pain is nothing right now. <laughs> Let's just go for it and, um, you know, swing as hard as I can and um, support my teammates as much as I can. And I think, you know, for me, obviously, I wanted to, to play as much as I could, but I did understand um, that the greater good did mean, you know, some of our younger players were getting in. Oh, there I go. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is hard to watch. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's it was definitely uh, so fun to have that that kind of um, light at the end of the tunnel with that injury there, just kind of go for it. And um, it ended up, you know, just being such a celebratory and an awesome weekend. And, um, you know, just to have, have that, my teammates and, um, you know, our, our coaches uh, at the end, I'll never forget that banquet at the end or at the end of that night as well, or that weekend. Um, it was just really special. And, um, you know, we kind of just uh, got to, I, I would say it was, it was emotional, but, um, and I'm such a sap, but I, I didn't find myself crying or anything like that. I just found myself like getting full body chills and just like throwing myself into playing because it was so much fun. So um, I definitely, uh, you know, look back on that so fondly and it's, it's such a special memory for me that, that weekend. I'm just going to add to this, you know, how close the parents on that group were and how they kept the entire Dartmouth family together. They would come to games before, they will do their tailgating, they all uh, cheer from afar, whatever we would be, whatever city we would be. They, they're just awesome. And uh, they were a big part of, of I think, everybody's kind of staying together because we always preach being a family and having our families around it's you know because for most of the players here their parents you know are from pretty far away so to have Emily's parents there or other parents around almost every weekend kind of taking everybody under them and Danielle's parents came many times I think Molly's parents came three times that year so it was almost like we have parents every week you know which was great and uh and they always have a nice cheering section and uh, and also have have you know have that trust you know that they support their daughters and through good and bad days and and uh, it, it was fun I, that banquet was definitely special after and ball looks like you gutted it out there you, you stayed in the game after uh, after that so you, you definitely like you said you you were definitely going to play no matter what as far as for that senior weekend there yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Emily, can you speak to uh, to that? You know, just the, the the everything that comes with playing on a senior weekend. You know, again, never mind trying to play the game, but just trying to you know keep that aspect you know in perspective. Uh, just talk to us a little bit about that weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, of course, senior weekend for any team is going to be emotional, just because it's like the last time you're going to play with all of your best friends and on the, on the same court and everything. But um, I think for us, we'd, we'd had like a pretty tough year coming from like a pretty good year. And we're all competitors. So we want to, we want to do well all the time. Um, but I think the senior weekend, we all just went in and we, we were like, we, we know we're not going to win the league, but we should have fun. We should do our best. And so we kind of went out, I think with, with just like, like as, as Molly said, hit the ball as hard as you can sort of mentality. Um, so that was fun. And then in terms of like fans and, and people being there, like huge shout out to my parents for going to, I think every one of my college games, except for when my sisters were getting married. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it was like, it was just awesome because a lot of the girls' parents were from far away, like Texas, California, and Hawaii. Um, so we, we, my parents came to like all the games, but even all the other parents visiting all the time, like we got so close. It was just like amazing having everyone there. I also remember that my, one of my sisters brought her son who was like less than a year old to senior night. And so after the game, he like tried to eat our Liber or one of our DS's faces or something, which was like pretty funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was fun and really exciting just to like, win this game and have everyone around. And yeah, it was great. You know, Zoe, you mentioned, uh, you know, and it's been mentioned a couple of times, obviously the injuries that plagued early on in this season and including yourself. And I, I guess for, you know, someone who is, who, who is who's sort of new to the sport, I guess I never realized the injuries that can take place and, you know, and, and how, 
one piece of your lineup, you know, when you lose that person, how big a difference it makes all around, as Coach has told us. I, I guess I never really, uh, you know, appreciated that as far as, you know, being a, a casual observer for, of the game. Yeah, and I think um, this season definitely feels a bit more amplified. I set in high school, so I, was, I wasn't I was a stranger to setting, but I didn't come to Dartmouth to set. I came to, to be a libero and to pass and, and play in the back um, court. So um, I hadn't had a rep, you know, in the actual setting position while being at Dartmouth and until literally like a point after Stacy went down and it was, you know, look down the bench. Okay. Can you go set a couple of points and then we'll figure out, I think we played like central Connecticut. And I kind of remember the conversation of you just being like, so like, are you, can we like, are you going to play this game? Like, are you good to go? Like, it's a good thing I had my shoes on during the army game because I literally wasn't suited up for the sacred heart tournament. And so, um, you know, yeah, I think especially with Stacy going down one, her integral part of, of our team, but two, just in the setting position in particular, that's not really a, a position where, um, you know, everyone is comfortable in it's, you know, it's kind of like the quarterback position. If you don't know how to throw a football, then you're not going to throw in someone who doesn't have, you know, a good throw and similar to the setting position. If, if you can't set, you know, we're not going to throw you there. So I, I think it, you know, was definitely amplified with, um, the position that happened and, and you know sometimes they're just freak accidents and sometimes it's wear and tear and um, it, it's tough to see but um, I remember this weekend in particular just being so awesome and kind of a culmination of the se- you can kind of tell that I'm like wrapped up in the girls used to tease me about it like my diaper because I had to get like this huge bandage thing and I had padding and it was just so looked so awful but um you know just keeping me taped together but my dad actually surprised me the day before this game um and i think there's a video and i can hear like molly kind of crying in the background and my dad came around and surprised me it was the first time a family member had seen me play in this gym and um it was just (laughs) it was so awesome that um i like my dad got to be there and um celebrating the birthday and making it through this season you know taped together um yeah yeah, I remember that conversation, Zoe, when, you know, you were sitting by me on the bench and Stacy went down and I looked at you and was like, so, um, uh, do you have your shoes on? Uh, are you ready to go? It's like, ah, shit. I was like, okay, that was enough to think of it. But that's that shows, you know, the flexibility that Zoe has and, you know, when we talked about it in our last recording that she could set, she could dig, she's just a really good volleyball player and and we needed that because uh both corinne and maddie were very very young and you know and uh and not necessarily you know ready to step up with a really i think a, a really simulated team that you know was poised to do something real special and 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 it was really challenging because the pressure on younger setter was mounting you know and uh we we at some point this season you know we had maddie who could pretty much set in front of her and corinne who pretty much could set just behind her and we were just kind of shuffling depends on who we want to set the ball you know at times when we have zoe who could pretty much set everyone so we had to figure out how what, how the chess match goes here um and then uh, and like i said it was it was you know, talk about a little bit about Molly. You know, she she had a back injury throughout before I even got here. But this was she was always always the the players who set the aggressive tone for the team because she had a good arm and she always liked to hit hard. Maybe that's you know your back was hurting. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, in in this particular game again, you can see doesn't matter. You know, she always so let's just go for it. So. You know, uh, when she had a couple of good swings early or, or kept that mindset, it helps everyone to stay aggressive throughout the match. Um, Emily brought some athleticism. Kyra brought super hard working. You know, she was a very, she led that, the team in the Ivy, I think, in blocks that season. Um, you know, and, and we, have, we have a combination of so many personalities and everyone brought something that we needed to make us a more complete team uh, in a, like I said, in a, in a really short time, you know, when uh, you come in Ivy League, you have 10 weeks of preseason and then I really didn't have much chance to know everybody. And and, and it was, 
it all came came out here. We were up early. Now Brown is start making a little bit of a run, um, you know, and then and then it's it's fun when you win it at the end. But people don't realize how 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 tough it is to win, uh, how hard it is to win a point. Uh, and you mentioned it earlier when injuries happen because it's a skill sports. Every player trained in a certain position when they are younger. So when all of a sudden something happened and you're missing a skill, then it's really, really hard to overcome it. So we had to kind of figure it out as the, and get different things from different players in different times. Yeah, Coach, uh, you know, you, you mentioned kind of that short time frame there from when you get hired and then you're kind of thrown right into it and, you know, here's a short preseason. Good luck. I mean, it, it just seemed like it had, to ever, it had to be going really quick, you know, a million miles an hour, it seemed like, at least from your perspective, from the hiring and then get thrown right into year one and season one. Yes, I, I mentioned that earlier. And I think, uh, you know, having uh, a team that I never had any any – disciplinary issue with this group because the senior really were they took care of everything they, they kind of got the, f- the freshmen on, the, on, on board they said this is the expectation this is what we do um, they held themselves to really high standard you know and uh, when you have good leadership from and, and they, like Zoe mentioned there were seven of them that's a pretty good group that, that you know, young players won't look and say, oh, you know, I'm not going to follow. I mean, this is, they, they kind of wanted to do it and they stuck through um, everything we went through from the beginning to the end. And they deserve a tons of credit for it. You know, like, like they mentioned, it wasn't maybe the, the, the season they all expected to, but, you know, uh, at the end, you don't remember all the wins and losses. You remember the friendship, you remember the hardship, you remember those moments that you can overcome. Here's another and find or kill, you know, yeah. So we got that. And uh, so I'll, I'll let them speak because they, they heard me enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Emily, I wanted to kind of bring it back to, to this season and just kind of as a whole, um, you know, the, the previous game uh, to this one was at Cornell. And I believe that was the game um, that, uh, or you actually did it, you got your 1,000th career point ag- uh, against Cornell. That was actually at home. Uh, but you just had a really good season. Your name's all over the record book in that 26. What, what, did you have high expectations for yourself personally going into that year? Or, you know, what just, what made everything click for you? Yeah, uh, I definitely had high expectations for myself um, going into that year. I think it was less so around like um, stats and stuff, but more so around sort of being a team leader and being like someone who is a go-to player on the team um, and just able to like help the team out in any way that I could. Uh, I actually remember the game when we when we were playing Cornell at home and I think I got the, my thousandth kill that game. Um, and I didn't know I was close to that. I don't think anyone did until like suddenly after the point they stopped and were like, Oh, also Emily just got a thousand kills. <laughs> we we're all like, Oh wow. You had no idea. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> no, I had no idea. <laughs> uh, I think the like fans in the stand knew before we did on the court. <laughs> um, yeah. I think uh, overall, like the, the team was just like a, a, pretty cohesive unit though so there was never any like pressure on one person to win or lose a game for us it was just always like a a team effort and I should note uh, Emily's uh, previous season in 2015 she was named uh, all Ivy first team so just want to make sure that we uh, threw out those are coming off a a heck of a season uh, prior to and Molly you know we we talked about you know the year before having such a good season and, and again when you come off those successful years, you know, we, you know, I think you mentioned it, you know, the expectations are already kind of built in that, Hey, you know, we, we want to come in here and we want to win. So that probably that expectation was already there coming off that first uh, coming off that 2015 season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think we used it as such a motivator for us. Like I think, you know, uh, at Dartmouth, we have sophomore summer. So before our, our junior year, 
um, we were able to utilize all the DP2, um, you know, the peak performance amenities. You know, we had our strength and conditioning coach. Um, we had conditioning three times a week. We had athlete runs every Friday, I think. Um, so we were able to get in really good shape and to see our um, work pay off that season. Um, I think to me personally, and I think to my class as well, um, you know, spoke to how that next summer was going to go. So we all put the work in, um, you know, the summer after our junior year as well and use that um, to mentally and physically prepare for uh, that senior season. So it definitely lit a fire under our butts and, um, you know, was a, a fantastic motivator in that sense. Um, and I think, you know, having a great freshman class with a lot of energy come in and, um, you know, great underclassmen as well, um, just kind of support um, and, you know, take the reins in a lot of cases as well um, was super great to have that season as well. That's a good segue to my next question for Zoe. You know, uh, Molly mentioned, you know, sophomore summer, and I'm, I'm kind of finding, you know, through talking with student athletes that that sophomore summer, you know, can be pretty big in, you know, developing, you know, your, your workouts, you know, becoming an athlete, becoming, you know, a little bit more with Dartmouth, you know, you're, you're here during the summer. And uh, can you speak to a little bit more about that sophomore summer and kind of like, you know, that experience with DP2 and what students get out of that? Yeah, I think in the, on a broad uh, scale, the thing I really noticed about sophomore summer is it felt like kind of the transition or flipping point of like, okay, like I got this place, like I got it down, I know where everything is, I know who I want to be here and my space here because you're kind of transitioning into becoming an upperclassman. So on a general scale, that's when I first realized like, like I was super comfortable here and I knew my way around and what I wanted to do. Um, and in terms of athletics, um, being able to, to focus in and train um, in a period of time where one, not any other Ivy really has because we don't have, you know, mandatory summer workouts like some other division one programs have. Um, it was a really nice competitive advantage to have a chunk of your girls on campus um, being able to train. And then the drive program um, that a lot of us get to participate in was a really awesome time to build community with other student athletes. That's when I first really met um, a lot of kids from other teams. And then two, just learning how to become a better leader for yourself and for your team. And so I think that's why, you know, the year before we came into a season where we had seven girls that had just gone through that program and learned how to be better um, team leaders. Um, I think that has a direct correlation to, to how well we did the year before. And so um, I definitely think having the time to focus on that development leading up right into season just because preseason's like 14 days and then you're off to the races and it's a very short season so having that time um, over summer is definitely beneficial and I know you can speak to you know the the benefit of, of DP2 and, and what that offers student athletes maybe for someone who, who isn't up to what that offers maybe you can kind of clue us in Zoe yeah, um, I was very fortunate to work for DP2 after I graduated for a year um, as an academic advisor. And so I think one as a student, um, just being able to benefit by getting support for whatever area you need. You know, it's no one size fits all. Some some students might find more care or more need on the physical side. So the physical therapy, the massage therapy, um, you know, just getting your body right. And other people might want more support on the academic side and free tutoring and, you know, career advising. So um, I think it's really awesome, you know, in-house to have all of that support. I know uh, sometimes when you think Ivy League, it's just about the academics first, and then you get to play your sport too. And the thing I really appreciated was um, that at Dartmouth, they were investing so much money, time, and resources into specifically athletic support because um, you can't find that all the way across our league. And so I know for me, I really benefited from being able to um, access academic support. And then it also, um, for me, the service opportunity, um, I was able to intern within DP2 as a student and that resulted in a full-time position for me after graduating. So um, yeah, super grateful for, for DP2 for, you know, snacks after practice to free massages to um, resume writing and everything in between. Well, we're coming up here on the final couple of minutes of this set. Brown uh, looking to go up 2-0 uh, here, and uh, we'll kind of watch the final couple of points here as uh, the Big Green and uh, the Brown Bears here in the final weekend. And uh, this one, a uh, 
Looks like it's going to be a tight finish here after uh, Dartmouth come out early in this uh, second game here and the Bears uh, claw on their way back in. So we'll just kind of watch the final couple of points here. Sorry, I was on mute. You know, so you can see those trends in the game when Zoe and Molly come in, we usually get ahead and then can we sustain it and not go behind? Obviously, we, we were up till about 22 and then Brown is up 24, 22. Now they missed the serve. You know, Zoe is serving and you hope you can make a little run here and uh, didn't happen this time. But in general, that kind of, when you look at momentums, and you kind of see how, you know, the games goes up and down. When you as a coach, you always said, how do you start? You want to make sure you have certain players play more, especially under these new rules of the side outs, which every point is a, is a point you want to kind of be in a position. This is kind of think, hit the tape and roll out, I guess. And that's how this game end. And we're down to zero, but We'll see. You know, there's still a lot of game left. I think we, we were up most of the game. We felt better about ourselves here. And now we go into the locker room down to zero. And again, you know, you when you don't have a great season, you can make a choice how you're coming back. And I, I vividly remember the conversation in the locker room uh, looking. I didn't have to say anything. I think Danny came up and said, come on, guys, we can do better than that. Let's get out and fight. And, you know, we'll see what happened next. Still more to come here as we're going to take a break here. Brown up uh, two to nothing in this contest. But, uh, of course, there's uh, still more to come for the Big Green. So stick around. More to come here for Big Green Classic after this. There are lots of things that are true about each of us, but sometimes we are held back from being ourselves. Sometimes we are told we can't do a certain thing because we're a boy or a girl, but it's okay to be who we are. Girls can be messy and boys can be neat. Girls can be fast and boys can be creative. It's good for both boys and girls to talk about their feelings and to clean up their messes. It's okay for all of us to be scared, brave, loud, quiet, gentle, and smart. And it's always good to ask for help when we need it. We get to decide who we want to be and how we want to spend our time. All that matters is we are genuine and no one is getting hurt. I'll support you in being yourself and I hope that you'll support me. Welcome back. Big Green Classic here. Brett Franklin joining you as we're watching Dartmouth women's volleyball from 2016 as Dartmouth battling Brown in the final home weekend of the season as Dartmouth trailing two games to none. However, I suspect there is a comeback here in the midst. So we'll uh, look forward to that. And uh, let's get back to our panel here. And um, let's start, uh, Molly, with you. Um, uh, your journey to Dartmouth, what, uh, what made you choose to come to Hanover, play volleyball for the Big Green, and uh, what was that journey like for you? Yeah, good question. It's been a while, but um, I played on the club team in Los Angeles, and a lot of my teammates, um, you know, were looking Ivy, and I thought, you know, why not? I was definitely looking um, to go somewhere with a great academic and athletic balance. Um, I had grown up going to UCLA games and kind of knew that wasn't uh, exactly where I was going to play. Um, you know, a, a school like that, you know, uh, Pac-12, anything like that. But, um, you know, kind of got on that recruiting circuit, started to interact with coaches from, I think, almost every Ivy, um, went on a couple of tours, uh, you know, over the summers, went and visited places um, and really, um, you know, fell in love with a couple of the Ivy League schools and really um, enjoyed the East Coast, you know, just tr wanted to try something new um, for those next four years of my life and was kind of ready to take that plunge. And, um, you know, I ended up narrowing it down to a, a couple of schools um, and it was like, you know, Columbia was in the city. 
uh, Princeton was, you know, in a beautiful neighborhood. I live right near there now, so I love it now. Um, but, you know, the second I set foot at uh, Dartmouth in Hanover, I was like, oh, wow, I think I've, I found it. Um, so it actually was a little bit harder than just that. I, you know, I'd gotten word from my club coach that they weren't that interested in me, that Dartmouth wasn't that interested in me. Um, so I started working really hard, you know, going to workouts before school, um, you know, really, you know, trying to build my muscle, get my uh, vertical up a little bit. I've gotten feedback from some coaches, um, you know, that it's, it's, you know, maybe not the, the place for you or things like that, or, you know, just, just tough. Uh, I got hit a couple times during recruiting and, um, you know, to get motivated and, you know, keep trying was kind of my, mindset there but um the second I stepped on that Dartmouth that Dartmouth campus and I had my uh official visit actually um I stayed with Lucia Pullman who was a uh, 15 and I remember I she's from California as well I kind of got under got into her dorm and was like okay so you can bring west coast to the east coast a little bit she had you know some cool music playing and um we just kind of hung out and she had her homemade nut butter or something like that and i was like okay so i can find my people here um it was so beautiful um and then meeting with the coaches and kind of getting a chance to see the you know dp2 program and everything they have to offer you know with that um was kind of like a no-brainer for me i mean the second i heard uh you know uh what is it called chocolate milk after every lift i was like i'm in um but no uh all jokes aside it was a really easy decision once i kind of got that final offer you know i i told the coach, I told Aaron at that time, I was like, I think I need a minute just to talk this over with my family. But like deep down, I knew it was where I wanted to be. Um, and so I was in the airport, um, you know, after that visit and gave her a call and was just elated and, you know, knew that was, that was going to be my home for the next four years. So, um, you know, it was a tough process for me, uh, recruiting, but totally worked out in the end. And I'm so happy that I ended up um, you know, couldn't be more proud to be a part of this community, um, you know, Dartmouth Volleyball and Dartmouth as a whole. Uh, Emily, same question, your journey to Hanover. Yeah, um, a good question. Molly, you, uh, I feel like we didn't have similar recruiting situations, but I've heard once that like getting recruited is a roller coaster and like every roller coaster is different. <laughs> like it's, it's always a bit tumultuous. Um, but I actually, so I'm from Long Island, New York, which is a bit of a, uh, it's not like one of the, I don't know, hotbeds people call it for, for volleyball. Um, so we didn't really get, uh, do like recruiting too early or anything. So I actually wasn't, I wasn't really like on the same page as the rest of the country in terms of recruiting. Um, and then I went to a couple of camps, I think one summer, um, and I ended up really liking the few camps that I went to. And one of them was Dartmouth. Um, and I loved the like outdoorsy aspects of it. And I loved um, how all the traditions were and how like the alumni all seemed really involved in, in Dartmouth still, even after leaving. Um, and then in terms of the program, uh, the girls were like a great group of girls, very friendly and easy to get along with. And I was like the most shy. So I, I was very um, quiet and like not interacting, but everyone was, was making an effort to get to know me. Um, and then the coaches were, were great. And it seemed like very good technical coaches. So, um, and I also just loved the school. And I think, like I said, the outdoorsy like aspects of it, if it all in sophomore summer, and there were a lot of big draws for it. Um, so I ended up committing to Dartmouth my like junior fall or junior winter, um, which is later than most other people. And I think they had already had a full squad for recruiting that year and that's also probably one of the reasons that our class is so big um plus plus we had a few yeah they, anyway it doesn't matter but yeah it was it ended up working out and i'm glad that that they came to dartmouth <laughs> and we were on the same official visit too so that was <laughs> funny <laughs> yeah i was super quiet they yeah, I was weird a little bit, but it was fun. <laughs> We're just so different than I got to know you over the four years, but it's it was, you know, it's such a funny memory to look back on. <laughs> yeah. 
Zoe, I know we, we got a little bit of your background the last time we had you on, but maybe for folks who, who didn't catch that, um, you know, uh, going from playing to now coaching, it certainly seems like uh, it's been a fun journey for you here in Hanover and you've really embraced the big green nation. Yeah. Um, yep. I love talking about the recruiting story, the why Dartmouth. Emily hit it right on. It's different for everyone. Um, I didn't visit Dartmouth. I'd never been to the East Coast. My first day on the East Coast, let alone Hanover, was first day of preseason freshman year. Um, I love telling that story because I know for a lot of uh, kids, especially with Dartmouth, I feel like a big draw is the environment and the actual place. And you know, you step foot on campus and you get that feeling in your stomach like this is home. Um, and I didn't actually really have that opportunity. And so um, I, I was, you know, talking to Dartmouth and talking to Harvard when I was a sophomore and then uh, got the no from both of them on the same day, actually, uh, my sophomore summer of high school. And so I was like, I, you know, Ivy League wasn't really in the plan. It was fun to talk to them while it lasted, but um, was kind of looking more at, you know, larger volleyball programs on the West Coast. And um, when Dartmouth kind of came back around at the end, um, I kind of just had this like realization that I was narrowing schools down for reasons that I, I felt were the wrong reasons and I wasn't taking the academic portion as seriously as I would have liked to and had this realization that I'd worked so hard in the classroom to do well in high school and um, you know getting to the point of realization that I'm not going to play volleyball for the rest of my life so I need to make a good choice on the school I'm going to for the other aspects of me outside of playing volleyball so um yeah I, I made the decision to to go to Hanover 5,000 miles away and it was definitely I think the two biggest things that made me feel good about the choice was um one getting to talk to two Dartmouth alumni from Hawaii um just to hear their experience specifically and then two looking at a volleyball team um, who had girls from all over the country. Um, you know, there were girls from California and Florida and Texas and the East Coast. So it was nice to see um, that diversity, but also kind of like Molly said that, you know, there were girls from warmer places that made it work. Um, and even though I didn't get to visit any of them or, you know, uh, meet any of them ahead of time, it, it seemed like a solid group of people just from so many different backgrounds. And um, Julia Lau was also on the team who's, um, she's from Hawaii too. So um, I was like, you know, it, I wouldn't be the first, so it, it's definitely doable. And, you know, loved my four years. And um, after I graduated, I wasn't planning on staying in Hanover, but the opportunity presented itself. And um, I think just the town feel and the community is very similar to the kind of communal environment I grew up in back home, you know, smaller town. And, you know, people say hi to you when you're walking down the street. And it's just like a nice family loving feeling. And so, um, that's why I love it. It's why it was an easy decision to, to move back to Hanover after graduating. And, um, yeah. Coach, it's fascinating to hear all three players journeys, you know, you, you hear about Molly's journey, you know, and, and Emily was kind of a, a late bloomer to the, to the recruiting scene. And she turns out to be, you know, one of the best players to come through. It's funny how each recruiting journey is different and how, you know, it, it shows persistence pays off. Yes, you know, it, it doesn't always happen when everybody's dream schools, they get to be picked to, to be there. Uh, it's great when it does, and maybe that's where the the pride piece here is so big because you know that the the players, the students, loves this tradition and loves this campus, and and it's a, it's a big part of who they are. You know, that, you know, for me, it's the fun part about coaching, players when you coach in other schools sometimes you convince them and later they find out they don't like it here you never have to convince anybody to be here they love it here they came here for the right reasons academics first you know the passion to be part of this great program you know and then give everything they've got and so so it's an it's an easy sell but um yeah i mean you never know i, I think with emily to be honest with you she came, she mentioned on the East Coast at the time wasn't necessarily a hotbed of volleyball. If she would have another year with us, she probably would have been, you know, uh, she was just starting to get to her volleyball, you know, knowledge and skills that could have been a very, very good player. Um, you know, Molly and Zoe came from California and Hawaii where they have foundations with, they watch college teams playing every weekend. So they have that IQ and understanding of the game. So, again, that's where you kind of 
uh, as a coach, you, you, you try to figure what's the best marks of the teams and where to put each player and how to make them successful. And then, and, and I believe Emily, when she didn't know she was close to a thousand, cause she, she always played and gave 100% and didn't really care. And she didn't think anything of just being there with her teammates and, and kind of that was who she was, you know, and, uh, you know, it's kind of great to hear that she said that, but I, I believe that she had no idea. And if we wouldn't handle the ball, she probably wouldn't even know and wouldn't even care. You know, it's just the way she is just always just, uh, works hard and brings her best and of herself when she can. Uh, Molly, uh, I'll ask you to lead this question off. Just the the competition in the Ivy League itself. You know, Coach talked about it. Any night, anybody can be beaten. Um, you know, it's just that's just kind of the way the Ivy League works. But coming from the West Coast, and you said it, you grew up watching. You know, Pac-12 volleyball. You watch UCLA. What was that like coming to the Ivy League? And, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you know, a little bit of no tournament for you as compared to other leagues. What, what was your first impression? And then as you graduated, your thoughts on, Ivy, on the Ivy League competition? I mean, Ivy League competition just felt, um, you know, a lot more my level. So I think coming from, you know, a really competitive club team and club environment. I played girls that went to Oregon. I played girls that went to Washington and, you know, I rode the bench or like, I just got like, you know, housed at the net, like things like that, that I'll never forget from my high school days. Um, you know, we kind of all ended up where we were supposed to. Um, but it definitely, you know, when you come into every gym, um, you know, within the Ivy league, you really do feel like, okay, like, it's going to be a battle and any of us can't win. And it's, you know, relatively everybody's the same kind of um, physicality and there's the same kind of skill level there. They're, you know, shorter outsides, you know, girls who are probably just, um, you know, booted right out of Act 12 offices or whatever it was um, who decided, you know what, I'll take my, my hops to Harvard or whatever it was. And, um, you know, you saw those kinds of scrappy players. And I think, you know, you find those everywhere, but it was a little more of that, that grit and scrap and kind of that, um, you know, volleyball IQ and intelligence that you do get with, you know, the student athletes that come through these schools um, that I think made it a really interesting um, playing environment and it really brought you know that kind of you know we we all read books when we came for preseason and um, you know the scouting reports were really intense and it's because there is a high expectation of um, you know what you can retain mentally and um, you know reading your opponents and things like that like we were expected um and, you know, still are expected to, to you know, bring that um, tenacity to the classroom and to our, our sport. So it was really cool to see that kind of crossover there. Um, but it definitely, I think it did mean that, you know, games were, and matches were a lot tighter, um, you know, I think as a – as a you know player who was uh i didn't get as much playing time on my club team um to come in and have that like grit and that drive that did kind of um you know bolster who i was in the ivy league and um on my team and at dartmouth and um you know i had a little chip on my shoulder i think for some of some of that part of my life and uh my playing career and you know to kind of see that all play out and, that, and have teammates that were similarly minded, um, you know, really brought that out on, on the Ivy, in the Ivy League, um, you know, in the league. <laughs> um, so I think that's what makes it special and what made it a good fit for all of us as well. Same question, uh, Emily, just what you made of the competition just in league play in itself going in uh, the Ancient Eight. Yeah. Um... Molly, it was so funny that you said that about your club teammates and people you played against going to all these huge schools. Like, I remember one time in high school, we played against one girl who was going to Penn State, and we were all like, oh, my God, she's going to Penn State. We were all freaking out. <laughs> and I, like, blocked her one time, and it made my, like, day in high school. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I, I guess that just goes to say that uh, I probably didn't have as – tough competition um, in high school. And so actually coming to college, the like level of play. So I was on a pretty good club team, but um, just like the level of play and being in a league where 
um, every single game you're going to get challenged was was new for me, um, I guess. Uh, and also, I think, like you said, there's just like you're constantly. I think it's it is kind of crazy how in the Ivy League, like even Yale, a team who like was pretty prominently in first place for all the years, like we still beat them and like. Penn had this has this thing where like no one could beat them in their gym and like <laughs> even the best team in the league couldn't during that year and it was always just like these weird little things that would happen like that just um, I don't know you just have to be like willing to put it all out there every single game um, and I also thought like preseason wasn't always like an indicator of what was going to happen in the league just because it was always changing. <laughs> Zoe, same question, you know, the, the, the competition within the league itself, as Coach uh, Gilad said, you know, anybody can win night in, night out. Yeah, I think that's one of the most exciting things about it. Um, you know, not having a tournament, I think it could be easy in a lot of conferences that after the first four or five games, you kind of know who's going to be in the top chunk and who's not. And so, you know, that, that having a reason to play type of feeling, I think could affect you more. But in a conference where the year before – uh, we were right there in first and looking at, you know, a share of the Ivy title at nine and five, you know, you didn't have to be undefeated to win um, the conference. And on any given night, um, the last place team could, could take out the first place team. And so I think that was exciting um, because you, you had to get amped up for every game. It wasn't ever, this is an easy weekend or this is um, an extremely hard weekend. It's just every game mattered. And I think um that was really awesome to, to keep getting better. Cause I, you know, volleyball is big here, but not necessarily in the Island that I live on. So like my high school team, we didn't lose a single game um, for my sophomore, junior and senior year. I hadn't lost a game. Um, and I was the tallest on my team since freshman year of varsity. I came to Dartmouth. I was the second shortest and um, you know, we had to grind for everything. And so it was definitely a very different um playing environment um for me and I enjoyed it because I you know I was challenged and there's some really good players I mean uh Harvard I, I don't know if it was our freshman year or one of the years Harvard won the Ivy League um they took the first set off of Nebraska at Nebraska the year they won the national championship which was just like what like what <laughs> but you know for, there are good players in this conference you know it's not your power five, but there are some solid players and some solid teams. And so it was exciting to play a high level and um, be around just some really, I think Molly kind of hit it, you know, smart, you know, high IQ, but just girls that are very intentional with their time and their actions in volleyball, um, in school, but also just in general in life, just very intentional um, people. And I'm very grateful for that. I think we're coming up to uh, the Set point here for Dartmouth as uh, game number three here. Big Green trying to get their first game here in this match after a Brown going up 2-0. Nice. Yeah, you can oh. see Kyra is warming up Ooh. here. She had a block and then she's, <laughs> you know, she's <laughs> want to put a few more points. But uh, you definitely could see that uh, Senior kind of start stepping up a little more. Um, I think we did a little switch so Zoe would be more with Abby and Corinne more with Kyra as well just to kind of not have all the freshmen in one line and the other so uh, we learn as we go we've got to go to game four now the best is yet to come and uh, we're going to go to set number four when we come back don't go anywhere more Big Green Classic coming up next growing your business isn't just one thing it's a million little things should you lease rent or own how fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cap table is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. For a limited time at Milton Cat, get 0% for 60 months on select new Cat Compact equipment. As a trusted choice firm, the Richards Group has been committed to local communities for decades. We take the time to get to know our clients, their needs, and budget. We're independent, so we work for you, not an insurance company. We use our expertise to find our clients the best home, auto, and business coverage at the most competitive price. Our team provides consulting services for employee benefits, retirement plans, human resources, and leadership development. The Richards Group. Prepare for tomorrow by contacting us today. 
All right, welcome back. Big Green Classic Women's Volleyball from 2016. Dartmouth versus Brown as we move on to the fourth game here as uh, this is the uh, final weekend uh, of the uh, ser of this season uh, here as uh, Dartmouth hosting Brown and then Yale the next night. But uh, we welcome back our panel, Gilad Doran, the head coach of Dartmouth Women's Volleyball, Zoe Leonard, current assistant coach, former player, class of 2019, and from the class of 2017, um, we also have Molly uh, Cornfine and also Emily Astorita. So we uh, thank you all for uh, joining us here. As uh, coach, you were just saying before we uh, before we hit the break there that uh, as we look back to this one, things starting to come together for the Big Green here as uh, this game moves along. Yeah, you know, after the first couple of punches, I think the players kind of relaxed a little bit and start playing. We also decided to get Danny to be our first server when we can. She had a good serving game. She goes far to the wall there, and we always could count on two to three points from, from her serve. And then Zoe started in the back, so we kind of got, um, you know, a, a good a good lineup, and Emily will be a four, so we got her to be three rotation in the front. So we kind of got where we wanted to be and, and and start settling into the game here. I think Brown might get a little tired. I don't know. But in, they started really hot, and right now they're struggling offensively. So bringing it back, uh, as we were talking about uh, each player's journey to Hanover, um, I want to kind of bring it back a little bit to that. Um, and Molly, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, the student athlete, really a, a term that is emphasized, especially in the Ivy League and, and here at Dartmouth, because, of course, academics uh, hold such high priority here. And uh, being a student athlete at Dartmouth, can you kind of walk us through what that experience like was like for you, handling the academic part, uh, being part of, of a varsity squad, and just kind of juggling all that during your four years? What was that like for you? Yeah, um, I mean, throughout high school, I played two sports um, and had to keep my grades up. So time management was nothing new to me, uh, but it's definitely, um, you know, totally increased when you get to when you get to Dartmouth and, um, you know, you have all this new distraction or, you know, whatever it may be going on. Um, but I remember my freshman year, my first term, you know, balancing school you know and taking you know bus rides these long bus rides i had never really <laughs> um done but you know having to study on those and things like that um, was totally new to me so it definitely took a lot of um focus and willpower that i wasn't as used to with you know some of my grades and you know with school being difficult at dartmouth you know it's it's high level and you know i had to kind of find what i wanted to study it took me a little bit of time um, so trying a lot of new things out was, was tough, but, um, you know, we definitely have enough resources, um, at Dartmouth and, you know, I definitely, uh, use the, uh, DP2 academic advisor quite a bit just to kind of help guide me through a lot of, um, changes and things like that. I think I got a tutor for my, you know, economics class that I was way, uh, in over my head, uh, with, uh, things like that. But, um, you know, you kind of learn from your your peers and your upperclassmen, especially. They kind of um, were able to guide me and tell me what classes were good, what professors, you know, understood kind of your sporting um, schedule. But, you know, ultimately, um, you know, I was really able to find what I enjoyed. I studied environmental studies, took a lot of earth science courses, so I was able to kind of be out in the field, um, literally in New Hampshire. You know, that's a lot of really cool, um, you know, things we got to see and study. Um, so I really enjoyed that part of Dartmouth and what they had to offer and, you know, getting that boost from DP2 um, and my peers and my upperclassmen as well really went a long way, um, you know, as somebody who definitely had to work work hard to get through, um, you know, the, the Ivy League education, but um, really paid off and I couldn't be more grateful for the work ethic that I did learn um, at Dartmouth as well as, you know, those um, – funky classes I did take, uh, you know, from econ to um, sociology courses, things like that. So uh, I really got to explore um, with the help of a lot of people um, within the athletic program and, you know, beyond that as well. Same question, Emily, what life was like uh, in the classroom uh, as an athlete? Yeah, um, I think I 
sort of agree with most of the things Molly mentioned. Um, it was awesome having all the resources that the athletic department um, had for us. So we were able to sort of um, have a couple of advisors who were helping out with like picking classes and how that was going to work out. And then we also had our, our upperclassmen teammates when we were first starting it, advising on like maybe what would be good to take in season or what might be good for out of season if you have labs and stuff. Um, but on top of that, I think just like the time management skills you have to learn is um, what really helps a lot with, with this. Uh, and I think most people found that they actually got better grades in season than out of season just because you're forced to um, manage your time and, and your workload better and sort of um, think ahead in terms of scheduling, how you're going to do your work and um, communicating with professors and stuff. Um, so I think that is definitely one skill that we learned in college that has like translated into after college, how, how you do with work and stuff. Um, and then also, like Molly said, we were able to take a really awesome variety of courses. Um, and I ended up studying neuroscience, but um, I took one computer science course at Dartmouth, which I loved a lot, um, CS1. Shout out to computer science one. Um, and so I ended up going into computer science and getting a master's um, in computer science. And now that's like what I do, which is just really cool and awesome that we even have the opportunity to take, take all sorts of classes like that. Zoe, uh, you mentioned to us, you know, your role as an academic advisor when you graduated uh, Dartmouth. So you obviously can speak to, you know, the resources that uh, Dartmouth athletes have uh, in that realm. But also as a student, what do, you, what do you remember from being in the classroom and just kind of that whole experience as a student athlete? Yeah, I mean, I definitely was nervous when I came in as a freshman. Um, you know, in the back of my head, I knew they wouldn't have accepted me if, you know, they didn't think I was qualified to be here. But I think everyone kind of goes through that phase of it's an Ivy League school. Am I smart enough to be here? Can I play a Division One sport and not fail all of my classes? And what's that going to be like? And so um, I think I learned pretty quickly. Um, the time management piece is obviously very important. Um, having the support, you know, having someone to help walk you through like, hey, this is a good class to take in season or maybe let's wait to take that one out of season. Um, just those small pointers, whether it be from the DP2 academic advisor, but even your own teammates. Um, I remember I got a box actually from Molly and Emily. We had like families on the team where we were split into four groups and um, <laughs> just so happens all three of us were in the same family. Um, but they sent like a care package um, to the new freshmen in the family and and there was like a note in it. And it was like little tips and tricks and everything from like Dartmouth lingo to, um, you know, their favorite class they ever took at Dartmouth. And so having teammates to help kind of guide you through on top of having academic advising. And then I think at the end of the day, Dartmouth is just such an awesome place to be a successful student athlete. Um, because one in four students at Dartmouth are varsity athletes. So it's not like it's rare to find an athlete in your class. Um, it's a quarter of them. And so professors are fairly supportive and on-campus resources are fairly accessible for athletes. And um, it's just, it's really nice. And then the quarter system makes it just so much better. Like only having to take three classes a term was something that I didn't realize how big of an impact that was going to have on my ability to succeed in my classes. You know, only having to focus on three subjects, um, whether you're in season or out of season made a big difference for me, for sure. Uh, Emily, I'll, I'll ask you and then Molly and, and Zoe can, can chime in. Was there a, you know, let's go back to when you first joined the program, was there like a welcome to Dartmouth volleyball moment for you? Was there like a, a certain, you know, instance like, oh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm playing Division One volleyball here. Was there ever any sort of instance or story you could share with us on that? Um, yeah, so I think like Zoe, we also got the care packages, which was super sweet. Uh, I don't know if they still do that. Hopefully they do. Um, but yeah, it had like a bunch of Dartmouth things in it, little notes. Um, I think one of the like first times when I when I was like, oh man, here we go, was when I we showed up for this thing we called pre preseason, um, where all of the freshmen from our year came to came to Dartmouth like a week early, I think, um, to just like get to know each other a little bit and prepare together. And this was something that like we had organized, not Dartmouth, um, but we we wanted to like meet each other and hang out a bit. So 
um, everyone had been there, I think a day or two. And I just like walked in the room and I, I was not comfortable. <laughs> and I just remember everyone was like, hi, Emily. They were all like so excited to hang out and just see me and like that we would get to be friends for four years and all of this. And I just was like, too overwhelmed and I just left the room and <laughs> I couldn't handle it. Uh, but then we came back in and we had like so much fun getting to know each other and just like eating every single meal together and going on these like crazy bus trips together and making forts on the bus. And I don't know, we did all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that was probably like the first like entryway moment into DVB. <laughs> Same question for you, Molly. Did you have a, a welcome to, to Dartmouth uh, moment for you? Um, both Emily and I actually got to play a fair amount. I mean, she played a, quite a, a bit all four years, but our freshman year, we kind of got to like come onto this team that had been revamped a little bit. Um, so like my confidence was relatively high when I got to start and things like that. But um, I think that main like, um, sense of okay now I'm or I'm like you know kind of like a grown up college student came just getting to know the girls or kind of like in the locker room just seeing how sure these like women were of themselves and like how confident and powerful and you know they were really cool um, you know and had been through you know two three three years of college um, and were just so confident and awesome um, but, you know, I was like a nervous little freshman and I, I thought it was, um, you know, kind of like, how am I ever going to get there? Or like, wow, like that's really intimidating or things like that. Um, you know, more on that like personal or social level. Um, but as soon as I knew that they would just take us under our wing and teach us anything we, you know, we wanted to learn and, um, you know, give us all those tips and tricks, um, you know, my confidence and, you know, that level of comfort did slowly begin to rise because we did feel comfortable in our freshman class. But then kind of when that, you know, senior and junior class came in and, um, you know, you kind of felt, you know, there was a level of respect there, but um, it was definitely really awesome. And to see these, you know, still be friends with these women today, but just see them do really cool, uh, powerful things in, in life. They're, you know, all really wonderful women and, um, you know, kind of getting to know them that first year was like, um, I don't know, it was, it was like, welcome, welcome to your next stage of life. And it was, it was awesome. It was really cool, but it was definitely uh, a little, a little intimidating at first. Coach, you, uh, you're in a very interesting position where you see your players grow, you know, from freshman to senior. And, um, you know, it must be a, a, a big thrill for you to see uh, these students grow year in and year out and, you know, season in, season out. And that has to be one of the perks of your job to see your athletes grow right in front of you. Yes, you see them grow in many different ways and you hope you can be part of uh, the way, um, you know, a little, like I said before, it's a small piece in shaping who they are as uh, professionals after, you know, and uh, we, we are lucky here. We have amazing student athletes here, uh, amazing support. Emily didn't mention, but once she finished, she actually went to play overseas one year to get her master's there. Uh, with a former player of mine from another school. Maybe she can share that story later. Uh, you, you know, so, so but like, I think for, for us as a coach, that's, that's the fun, you know. This is why this year is super hard because, you know, we're looking at our, this is our senior weekend from traditionally, you know, play whatever, Brown, Yale, doesn't really matter, Princeton. And our current senior right now, their senior game was Cornell last year at home. A year ago today today uh yes we won the last weekend and you know both colombia and cornell but you know that was the last time they had a chance to to do and and you know our relationship with the three seniors are graduating this year you know tola elise and uh well you're not even here on a court yet and and lauren have grown off the court more because of this pandemic and everything we have to do. And, and that's kind of where I value my experience. You know, I 
keep up with most of the players that that um, I coached. You know, I'm talking to Molly every once in a while. I'm talking to her mom quite a bit. Uh, you know, Emily and Kyra. You see them when we go to play in Harvard and and New York, and, and it's fun to see how they stay passionate and connected. But you know, we I mentioned it before. The values that brings us together is what connects us after the game's over. Uh, who we are as as uh, you know, adults and off the courts. And that's what matters most to me. I mean, if I help them to be, to better themselves and use it in their professional lives, then that's where I get most of the enjoyment and to see how successful they are after they, they finish here. This is just four years, short four years of their lives. But definitely we emphasize, and Zoe know now when she's on the coaching stuff, how we constantly talking about how can we develop and and get the most and to, to have each player be the best version of herself while she's here. Of course, using, using Dartmouth and being a student athlete, but being part of our program, what do we add to their experience, uh, to their confidence, to their growth, to their um, just being young professionals or successful women going forward? Yeah, and I think uh, back to the, the last question about your, your welcome to Dartmouth or welcome to Division One. So I actually was scrolling through my, my Instagram the other day and I actually posted like a clip from my first ever college game. Um, we were playing at San Diego and they were ranked, I think, 14th in the country at the time. And I like totally got six packed, like right in the face. And I think I like my caption was like, welcome to Division One, I, I guess. So that was the first time that I was like, I played as a freshman and I was not did not think I was going to. I came in and Julia Lau had just come off of her uh, summer where she was like the number one ranked female athlete on campus because she could lift the most and run the fastest and she ended up being injured. So that that's why I got the nod to, to start that weekend. And I had no idea what to expect. And it was just so awesome to be able to contribute on the court. And then I didn't know any of the girls. I didn't know any of their names. I didn't even know my classmates. They all came on their visit together. and. Um, I think when I, I was also very quiet. I don't know if Molly and like Emily remember or would agree, but like, I didn't, I don't think I really talked much my freshman year cause it was just so overwhelming and I didn't know what I was doing. And it was just a lot of people. But that, that first weekend when we went to San Diego, Molly was actually my roommate and it was my first road trip and, you know, first big trip away from home. And um, Molly's parents came busting into our room and just like came in and we're just, so like all up in our room and I think Molly felt bad about it and I like was so happy because it just felt like a family and they were so excited to meet me and talk to me and like talk about the game and just get to know each other and it was my first weekend playing volleyball and like I just felt like Molly's family took me in and then just the whole team at, at large like it just felt comfortable and I wasn't expecting to feel that like loved I guess that soon. But that was, yeah, Molly was my first roommate. <laughs> and I won't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up to uh, what should be the final point here for Dartmouth, looking to even this thing up at uh, two apiece. Big Green uh, playing really well here in this fourth set. So we'll just kind of let it roll here. <laughs> Oh, look is. at the cross body, but <laughs> Molly here, you know, it's a little bit changed, you know, game two kind of the tape, game four goes in and, you know, that's how if you play, you know, you can turn the corner here, so that's good to see. The exciting fifth set coming up next when we come back here on Big Green Classic. Don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Pierre LeBlanc, president of Engelberth Construction. For over 40 years, we've been recognized as one of the largest and most dynamic commercial construction companies in northern New England. As a premier builder and partner of Dartmouth Athletics, we have built many facilities on campus. And at Engelberth Construction, we truly believe in building relationships for life. Go Big Green. Domino's knows a thing or two about delivery. So when we saw people were getting tacos and burgers delivered like these, we had to step in. Introducing our new chicken taco and cheeseburger pizzas. What? Oh my. Now the best way to get a taco or burger delivered is to get a Domino's pizza. 
Welcome back. Big Green Classic here on DartmouthSports.com. Brett Franklin with you. It's women's volleyball action from 2016, November 15th, 2016 to be exact. The Dartmouth Big Green hosting the Brown Bears in the final weekend of the regular season. As we welcome you back, Brett Franklin with you. Joined once again by the head coach of Dartmouth Volleyball, Gila Doran, Zoe Leonard. Assistant coach, class of 2019, also joining us, Emily Astorita, class of 2017, along with Molly Cornfine as well from the class of 2017, joining us here as we're going to watch the fifth and final set as the Big Green battle back down 2 nothing to even this thing up at two apiece. So before we get into watching the final few minutes of this, because I definitely want to get everybody's thoughts as we watch the final uh, couple of points here, uh, obviously we have – three alumni here joining us and um uh, uh, emily i'll start with you just you know now that you're part of the alumni team you're part of this alumni network with uh, dartmouth volleyball uh, the one thing that i've learned in my time uh, at dartmouth is you know the how big and how supportive the dartmouth alumni network really is and i'm sure you've been able to experience that since you've graduated dartmouth and, and what does that mean to you being an alum not only of dartmouth but of dartmouth women's volleyball yeah, um, I think being an alum of Dartmouth women's volleyball is definitely a big part of my identity and a part of my life um, still. Uh, I live in Boston now, and, and I think a lot of my closest friends are from, or my closest friends in Boston are from, um, from Dartmouth volleyball. And then, of course, we're still very much in touch with the rest of the group um, from, from Dartmouth volleyball. And then on top of that, we have a book club with some of us in Boston where we hang out and, and read books together. Um, sometimes it's virtual, but it's always fun. Um, and we also play on club teams. I mean, on rec leagues together with each other and we beat, beat all the other teams. Um, so it's just, it's very fun. <laughs> we don't beat all the teams, uh, but it's very fun. And uh, I think that the, the like connection that we get while we're at Dartmouth just from, from everything we go through and everything we do together just continues on past that. Um, and it's fantastic, I would say. Same question, Molly. Now that uh, you're an alum, what, what does that mean to you and what will it mean moving forward? Yeah, um, you know, as when I graduated, I moved back out to Los Angeles and started um, working in the restaurant management world and was moved kind of around the country. And every single place I went, um, you know, there's a Dartmouth Club of LA, there's a Dartmouth Club of um, San Francisco, Northern California. There's, um, you know, one out here as well on the East Coast, um, you know, in New Jersey, in New York. Um, and it's really cool to see, I think, in um, when I lived up at near San Francisco, I was able to get, you know, uh, a futon from somebody just through the, through the alumni network, you know, little things like that, um, where we, we are able to reach out. But, um, you know, more specifically, I mean, my, my closest friends are are my teammates, but um, over quarantine, we have had a couple of virtual socials. I, I believe you guys talked about these um, in the last uh, Dartmouth Volleyball recording, but um, it was such a special time for me because you got to, see, you know, we got to see all our teammates from, uh, even that we played with, but the women that had also played, you know, 2010, 2001, you know, all the way back um, to the beginning of Dartmouth Volleyball, it was amazing to see these women and hear their stories and see how they were handling quarantine and see how, um, you know, you know, they, some of them brought their kids in or two of us had like lose mugs from, um, you know, lose diner, uh, you know, on main street. And it was, it was really cool to, you know, make those connections even, you know, during this time, but to have, um, such a strong group and support of these, you know, really cool, um, successful, wonderful, beautiful, well-spoken women, um, you know, and ha be a part of that, to be a part, a part of that group is, um, you know, something that, um, I'm so grateful for and, um, you know, wouldn't trade it for the world. Zoe, I got to imagine, you know, not only being an alum, a former player, but to come back and coach for your alma mater, that's pretty, that's going to be pretty cool. That's going to be a great honor. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. I, I know a lot of people, when I first had the opportunity, I had some friends who were like, you want to coach? Like, 
worked for the coach that you played for or like you want to coach girls that you played with and I was like absolutely and I think that's something that's really special I don't think you know every program across the country have that kind of team culture where you're comfortable to come back and you know be a coach of girls you played with or you know have a good relationship with their head coach that they don't you know, mind working for them. And so I think um, it's been pretty special to be able to slide right into that position with really no hesitation. And um, I moved into that position about four days before everything got shut down for the pandemic and feel like I've been able to effectively, you know, fill that assistant coach role on the team, despite not actually being able to, you know, coach in a, in a normal capacity. But yeah, the alumni network is phenomenal. I've really enjoyed um, getting to know a lot more of the Dartmouth alum past the girls I played with the first virtual social we did in the spring um, it was just everyone kind of random breakout groups everywhere from an 86 who was on the club team far before we were ever even a varsity team um, to current players on the team and after that call um, all the girls within like my five-year bubble were like texting each other and like let's stay on and we stayed on for like an hour and a half after talking about you know Lottie getting married and like their new house and you know talking about new jobs and um, nephews and nieces and so it was just a lot of fun to connect with with that group again and we're still active in our snapchat group sometimes you know sharing some funny photos and memories and um, you know just a really strong bond that um, I definitely wasn't expecting coming into Dartmouth I knew about the alumni network in terms of employment opportunities and I thought you know maybe that's just kind of it you know I need a job let me look in the directory and see who's working in the same field but it's so much more than that you know people willing to you know give you their shirt off their back because you're a Dartmouth alum um, and that kind of community is it's phenomenal and I'm super grateful to be a part of it um, yeah Coach, uh, you know, I know from your perspective, you know, the alumni uh, make a, are a big part of your program and, and you want to make sure that that continues. And I know that they've been big supporters of the program and, and of, uh, of what you're trying to do. I know that that's a big part for you. Yes, I think it's a uh, strength for a program is to know who was here before you, who is here now and live it in a better place where you came here. And I think uh, since I've been here, I was... Again, same way these girls accepted on me, the alumni um, also reached out. Um, we have a great advisory board. You know, it started um, in 2016 with Michelle Fortier, who was one of the pioneers of the program uh, back from the 90s. Now is Ashley by Ashley Dean. And, you know, we have 17 members who, you know, find times to 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 stay connected and you know the the molly mentioned the uh, alumni social you know that was initiated by the advisory board to make sure that we stay connected and and get to know you know players from different generation and and share those stories you know right now we're looking at to do a mentoring program so our alumni can mentor current players or even uh, past players who are looking in jobs or transition or classes so we're really expanding and making sure that, uh, you know, alumni are a resource, you know, they've been here, they know what's been done. They obviously have the pride and they want to stay connected. And it's a great way for us to expand the family of, uh, you know, making our program. Our, our dream here is to build a team that will win an Ivy championship. And I think every alumni know that they are part of it at some point, you know, everyone has a part in, in it and not just those who will be there when it's happened, you know. So uh, I, I'm really honored to to represent and, and, and be part of this. And I feel special myself just to be around them, um, you know, just to go back to the game here. You see up and down, we were five and two, and now it's nine and nine. And it's like, it's never ending story, but you can see that uh, how engaged some of our uh players right now the body language is different they calling the plays they kind of already knows after four games you know exactly who they're gonna set you know exactly who is gonna be getting the, the ball and it's just now it's you know brown has been on a run since we're up five two they, they're gonna probably gonna be uh making a nine to four run before things will turn you know and then we just again this is a pivotal position here because if we can side out we're going to get uh danny again to serve who was the best server she always started us in games in two zero so we hopefully can get her in the back here and uh 
and and see if we can turn these things around before it's too late. But Brown is not giving up here, you know. So it's definitely a nail biter here. So let's see. Yeah, let's. I'm going to uh, cease talking here and watch the fun here as Dharma's going to go on a big run, and I'll let you guys uh, talk it the rest of the way through. Yeah. So here we got a kill by Molly. Not the hardest hit, but you know, when when it's on the ground. It's okay, you know, we'll take it at this point. And now we got uh, Danny to serve. We have Emily in the front here. Uh, we move her to the right. So her and Abby here start the block party, you know. And uh, <laughs> okay, it's a, we, were, we knew when we have Emily on the right with either Kyra and Abby, if we can get the other team to be out of system, that was pretty much... Um, scoring for us because it's such a big block you know so uh, we'll see we got one here see how brown is trying to run away from it um just missed it here but juby was all over it she wasn't gonna let this one drop she oh yeah she had that <laughs> she's so defeated <laughs> <laughs> she had a it's good so game it's crazy because the the court yeah. we've redone the court since this so the court doesn't even look like that anymore got a different logo no right. way yeah, the court the court is we got different wood down. But just good old now. Nah, yeah, wow. Abby. Yes, Abby. Take a block, so um such a now we had a balance we have a pretty balanced game, you know, with Molly thirteen and a half, Emily thirteen and a half, Kyra thirteen points, Abby twelve uh, points. So we have we have a pretty good distribution. There. There Ooh, this is it, it's in game five, Zoe. <laughs> She dis I, I displaced my rib on that play. <laughs> well, I, before and for then, the next and like then we still saw her for the yeah. kids, so that's <laughs> not <really> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a <laughs> yeah. I remember it didn't look I yeah, that did not feel very good. But it's we were so close. We we're so close. <laughs> Molly, you got a strong shoulder. You dropped your shoulder and just bang. I was thinking about that. I must have been feeling really strong that day. <laughs> we, got the we, we got the ball. Bob. Thank goodness. I wasn't worried about it. I'm like still stressed about this, even though I know we did. <laughs> <laughs> so we're making a switch again with Emily and Molly. And Boom! Ooh. Look, look, at look at that block. <laughs> there it is. The comeback completed. Down two games to none. The big green win it in five sets, 3-2, and uh, get a uh, victory over the Brown Bears and uh, certainly a uh, comeback that will uh, certainly be remembered, especially by our panel today, who we're very grateful for uh, having with us. Uh, big thanks again to head coach of Dartmouth uh, Volleyball, Gilad Doran, Zoe Leonard, uh, as well, Emily Astorita, and uh, also Molly uh, Cornfine. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining us. This was a lot of fun and uh, certainly great to uh, look back at one of the uh, best memories for uh, women's volleyball. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having Thank us. You. And uh, happy holidays for everyone, and be safe and healthy, and hopefully I'll see them uh, on an alumni game this spring maybe. And we thank all of you, Big Green Nation, for tuning in to Big Green Classic. Big thank you to our producer, Ben Myers. Thank you to our panel. I'm Brett Franklin saying so long. Stay healthy, stay safe, and go Big Green. <laughs>